It's that time of year. As many head out on vacation, along with your sunscreen, they pack a good book. Jeffrey Brown is here now with a roundup of some of the best summer reads, part of our arts and culture series, Canvas. This is a time of the year when many catch up on their reading while away on vacation. Let's look at some interesting reads for this summer. For that, we're joined by Maureen Corrigan, book critic for Fresh Air on NPR. She's a professor at Georgetown University and author of So We Read On, How the Great Gatsby Came to Be and Why It Endures. And Carlos Lazada, nonfiction book critic for The Washington Post. He won the Pulitzer Prize in criticism this year. So first of all, Congratulations. Thank you very much. Maureen, why don't you start us off with two or three uh, fiction picks from yeah, your list? Okay. My first pick would be Ocean Wong, who is a Vietnamese American writer. He's 30 years old. Known first as a poet, right? Known first as a poet. He mm -hmm. came to everybody's attention two years ago. He won a lot of awards for his volume. Night Sky with Exit Wounds, mm -hmm. which, you know, as, as far as titles go, that's pretty good. The title of his debut novel is called On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous, and it's an immigrant story. It's semi-autobiographical. Wong himself was born in Vietnam and came to this country when he was about two years old. It's figured in the form of a letter by a, a young man written to his mother, and his mother is illiterate. She works in a nail salon. And really, it's, it's a novel that uh, you read because of the language. Mm. Wang's use of language is spectacular. And I really found myself, it's a small book, I really found myself taking a long time to read it because I kept rereading pages. So that's, that's one. How about another one? Jill Simmons' uh -huh. novel, The Body in Question, I feel like Jill, Jill Simmons is a novelist who's kind of just under the radar in terms of literary fiction. She's been writing for a long time. This is a wonderful novel, again, short. It's about two jurists on a, on a tr sequestered uh, trial for murder, and they start having an affair. So Simmons does a great job in terms of catching people's personalities. and. You know, the kind of the, the emotional energy in that jury room and in the motel where everyone is sequestered. But it's really a novel about guilt, the murder, as well as the guilt of, of the two illicit lovers. All right, Carlos, you, you're our nonfiction guy here. Start us off with a couple of those. And I, I saw the list. It's politics. Yes, <laughs> I, I work at the Washington Post. What can you do? Um, one that I want to highlight is called Audience of One. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, Television and the Fracturing of America by James Poniewozik. When we think of President Trump and television, we think of uh, how much cable he watches yes. and his mind meld with Fox News and the like. This is a book that looks at how Trump has embodied and benefited from some of the big shifts in television programming over the years, like the, the rise of popular antiheroes mm -hmm. and the techniques of reality TV. The author is um, the television critic at the New York Times, mm -hmm. and he basically treats Trump as the most important character in the history of American television. It's just <laughs> a smart approach to the subject. Mm -hmm. uh, the next book I wanted to highlight is called These Truths by Jill Lepore, the historian and New Yorker writer. It's a one-volume history of the yeah. United States and looked at through the prism of the self-evident truths of the Declaration, right? So human equality, natural rights, and popular sovereignty. And she assesses the extent to which we've lived up to those truths or not. That's one that our, our viewers might know because I talked to her on the program. But She's it's terrific. definitely worth reading. Okay, Maureen, uh, you have a couple in the mystery category. Absolutely. I think summer mystery mysteries, for this summer, that, right? they go together like gin and tonic. So the first one would be James Elroy, This Storm. Anybody who's read Elroy knows that he writes, he writes himself like a storm, like a hurricane. It's set in 1942, January 42, in L.A., of course. Uh, giant rainstorm coming into the city. A body is unearthed in Griffith Park from a former, you know, an older crime. You've got Japanese citizens being interned. You've got uh, fifth columnists in the city. It's mm -hmm. over the top. It's crazy. Barbara Stanwyck makes a, makes a, a cameo, mm -hmm. loads of historical figures. 
But what Elroy is, I think, really doing is he's writing this epic of L.A. This is his fifth novel in, in his L.A. series, and it's really about the corruption that's general all over the city. So that's, that's a fabulous one. And then uh, Ruth Ware is a British writer. She's a relatively new discovery for me anyway. And um, she, she has been writing these mysteries that are sort of Daphne du Maurier-type type mysteries that um, are very gothic tradition. The latest one that she's got coming out is called The Turn of the Key. Mm -hmm. And as the title suggests, it's really indebted to The Turn of the Screw by Henry James, a governess in an isolated mansion. Um, the mansion is a smart house, so it's technologically up to date, and it seems to be watching her. Lots of unseen forces are watching her as well. Okay, Carlos, you, you picked a novel and a, and a book of poetry, I yes, see, right? Yes, yes. Uh, the book of poetry is called Citizen Illegal by a young Mexican-American mm -hmm. poet named Jose Olivares. Um, and it's just funny and touching at the same time. And it really grapples with some of the complexity and absurdity of identity today. A lot of it is set in Chicago, where he's from. There's a, a poem called Mexican Heaven, which is memorable. I, I've, I've, um, I've, I've watched him recite it. Uh, and the novel I want to highlight is um, a couple of years old now, but um, I, I wish it had gotten more attention than it did. Uh, it's called American War by Omar el Akkad, and it imagines a second American civil war set late in this century. It's a, it's a climate war. It's a resources war. And um, so you have, you know, internally displaced peoples, climate refugees, you know, youth radicalization. Uh, Florida is now the Florida Sea. Um, the capital has moved inland to Columbus, Ohio, which is always the sign of dystopia when the capital's in Ohio. Um, and red and blue America have ceased to be just election night constructs and are real physical and political realities. Okay, that's a few books for the summer. We have to leave it there for now. Carlos Lozada. Maureen Corrigan, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.